Okay, right now we are about to have some crazy stuff that's happening. The states are opening up and over half the states are about to start enforcing evictions. And this is going to bring financial devastation to the individuals who get evicted. And they're going to have fleet and other financial devastation. I believe that van life, people living in their cars are about to explode. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to rebuild your life after financial devastation such as this, because these people don't have a car, they don't have a job, they don't have a place to live. As a person who was formerly homeless, it gets strange. Typically people who don't have mental issues or substance abuse problems, typically work their way out of homelessness very quickly. They'll move in with a friend or something. They'll have a network. They won't be homeless that long, but if you suffer long-term homelessness, that is going to be really, really bad. So what I want you to do, since you're working your ba back, because I feel that this video is gonna age very well because there are many people who are gonna be looking for these solutions. So what I want you to do, if this is your first time here, is to go to the front of the channel and begin to look at the older videos so you can build your financial literacy and become financially educated. I'm speaking to you from a person who went through it. I never got evicted, but I will tell you that story that of what I did. And one of the things that you're gonna have to do is to face your problems head on. There will be no running away. There will be no like disappearing and hoping that the, your problem is going to disappear. It's not. It's just going to get worse. Let me tell you what happened. When I was on my economic descent, I was I put myself in a position where I knew I could not pay the rent for my apartment. And I knew really early. So what I did is I went to the leasing office and I talked to the people and I said, look, I'm not going to be able to pay rent this month. Uh, what I'm going to do is try to get out of there and I'm gonna move everything out of there. And to my word, I was able to completely move out of the apartment before rent was due again. And I completely got it, we did the walkthrough, and they didn't put that on my credit report. I don't know if I just got lucky or what, but I just left. So if you're in a situation where you cannot pay your rent and you're just kind of sitting there waiting and like, well, they can't kick me out, they're not gonna cut, that's about to expire. Uh, it, it would be better if you were to go on your own and get out of the situation because if the sheriff comes and has to evict you and put your stuff on the curb, let me just tell you what happens. Back in the day, I don't know if they still do this because it's been a while since I've seen an eviction, but literally they would throw someone out, put their stuff on the lawn, and people would stop and pick through it and take stuff. I don't know if that's how evictions happen today, but that's just not really good. So if you're in the position where you know stuff is going south, what I want you to do is begin to liquidate everything that you cannot pack in your car. If you've got furniture, it's better to sell it for 50 bucks on Craigslist than to have it put on the curb and be destroyed and damaged or something happened to it. So I want you to be in a straight liquidation mode. Sell it on Craigslist, sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Get rid of anything that you're not gonna be able, other than your clothes, because it's gonna be hard, because the, the last thing you wanna do is put this stuff in storage. Because what you're gonna do is pay for the same item, two, three, four, five. You know, when I, I used to be a storage auction guy, and there were units that I bought that people had in storage for 10, 15 years. They paid for that stuff over and over and over again. So don't go ahead and put it in storage. What you wanna do is to get rid of it, let it go, move on. And you want to get down as light as possible just to your personal effects and clothing, stuff that you could literally drive around in with your car. You wanna be light and lean and also, Look for assistance. Uh, there are many cities that have shelters. There are many cities that have programs. Get on Google and look for like, hey, I'm about to be homeless. What do you have for me? Exhaust these programs. If you're a veteran, 
there might be a program in your neighborhood. Years and years ago, there was a place where they had a veterans program where they had these apartments and they were literally giving vets apartments, one and two bedroom apartments. So check out whatever programs that happen. Let's talk about your credit. Your credit is about to be destroyed. You get an eviction, you get a re repossession, your credit is destroyed for five to seven years. It is what it is. And also some advice to if things are going south, it is best to let everything hit at the same time. Because let's say you're going to a situation where you're struggling and you're just pushing stuff off. All you're delaying is the inevitable. If you're in a situation where you're going to get your car repossessed, that's going to hit your credit report for seven years and it's going to be a really bad mark and it's going to drag your credit score down. And that's going to be depending upon what goes on, it's gonna be pretty hard to do credit repair and get that off. It's because, you know, especially the more recent it is, the harder it will be to get that off because they're gonna update it. So let's say you get a repossession, you get evicted, and you, all your credit cards, and this is something else that's gonna happen with the credit cards. If you have American Express cards and you go bad on them, you're not, you're not gonna ever be able to get another American Express card unless you pay off that balance and, re and get reconsideration. You will have to pay it off and then fill out the form and go all through this. So whatever credit cards you have that are going bad, if they go bad, they go to collections, you're never ever gonna be able to get a credit card with those companies again. Fortunately, there are literally thousands of credit card providers out there and there's a whole bunch of people you can reestablish credit with. But my advice to you is to let everything hit all at once because once your credit goes bad, like if you're getting evicted, you're getting a repossession, you want all this to happen around the same time because in seven years, which I know seems like a really long, long time, it's going to drop off. But if you know, and also for those of you who are thinking about filing bankruptcy, I want you to look at your situation. If you just have credit card debt or you have medical bills or you have a repossession or something like that. I would not file bankruptcy because that's going to extend the bad credit window to 10 years versus about six years and nine months. So you're going to have like three years longer where you're going to be impacted and will not be able to participate in the credit system. So once again, there, there are credit repair companies out there that can do amazing things, but I'm here to tell you if you have some extremely bad credit marks, it's going to be hard. So I've already talked about what's happening, how bad it is. What do you do? First of all, you got to assess where you are and you got to know what your credit is. You got to know what your situation is. And also if you get evicted, there will be people who will rent to you, but they're going to usually want three months deposit. So the first thing that you need to do is to begin establishing cash flow. You're not going to be able to live on credit anymore. So you're going to have to live on the cash that you make. Now, if your car is repossessed, you're going to have to figure out a way to get some cash and buy you a pay cash for your car. This is going to be one of your ways that you can navigate this situation because there are buy here, pay here's that even after a repossession, they will finance a car for you, but you've just went through a catastrophic event. The, la the last thing you want to do is to load yourself up with debt. You want to be as lean and clean as possible because you have all these bad marks on your credit report. You don't want any more debt. So essentially you want a car that you pay cash for and you want to start begin managing your money extremely well because this is the only money that you're going to have to live on. You're not going to be able to get cash uh, credit. You're not going to be able to do any of that stuff. And to some degree, let me tell you what happened to me because I wrecked my car. I lost my job. I didn't get evicted because I left and then I was homeless and I spent three years in a purgatory state of working low wage chump change jobs until I figured some stuff out because even after you go through all of these things, you're still a valuable person. You still have talents. 
and you still can contribute to someone's business. And when I got laid off that, that you know, because essentially I, I got through what is T-Mobile now, it was Powers Tell or Voice Stream. I was a salesperson and I did really well and I got laid off. And I went home and I thought about it and I thought up because I don't know what happened to me, but at that moment I was ready to confront the truth and I knew that I needed a better job. So one of the things, even with bad credit and stuff, you could still get a better job. So what I did, maybe I'll tell you the story what I did. Maybe you can use something similar. I intuitively knew that they would check me out, but they would not check out my reference. And I don't know how it goes today. I haven't had a job in, oh my God, like 20 some years. So I don't know how that works. But one of the things that you can do is have a friend become your reference. Your friend can be at another company and say, oh, you worked here, because unless they do tax verification, looking at your tax firms, they're not gonna know. So essentially, what you wanna do is to scan the job boards and find the highest paying job that you know that you can do. Because your whole thing that's gonna get you out this hole is gonna be income. It's not going to be God, you know, God, I think God is hands off. I think God's not going to really touch anything that's going on with you. And this is what I did. I, I went home and, you know, funny thing is I had a computer in that boarding house. I knew Tony Brown's journal. He said the difference between a, you know, a kid with a computer in the home and a child without a computer in the home was substantial. And I just went ahead and I figured out a way I got myself a computer. I had 17 inch monitor, I had the tower, I even had a laser printer. And I went on that computer and I went to monster.com and I looked for jobs that I knew that I could do. I knew that I could do, but I didn't have references and I created a reference for those jobs. And I got one and that was the beginning upward trajectory for me because Let's keep it honest. Like you've just went through this catastrophic event. You lost your car, you got evicted, your credit's jacked. You're not in the state of mind to start a business. Some people that may be the impetus to start something deep within you where you can actually pull it off. But for most people, you've got to balance out and get to a point where you're settled, where you have a job, you have income, you have money coming in and then you can start doing the credit repair because until you establish income and one of the things I'm doing is below, I'm giving you 30 days to 2,500. You know, if you, I, I will tell you this story in a minute about Cleaver that this is something else I, we will talk about. Uh, one of the things that you've got to do and it's imperative is you've got to make making money a gospel, a doctrine, a mandate. You, you cannot be lackadaisical about this. Many people fall off into a situation where they don't have any money and they just go with it and they just become settled into that lifestyle. And the older you are, the harder it is gonna to be to pull this off. But let me tell you what happened to Cleaver, which was on someone that was taking 30 days to 2,500. He was someone, he didn't have a job, he was living with a friend, he didn't have a car. And he asked me on a live webinar, he's like, hey, this is my situation. What can I do to make money? And I said, start a service business. And Cleaver knew how to do some computer stuff and he got on the bike, rode into town, and he was able to make $500 his first day of going out there, just knocking on doors, cold calling, and he found some businesses who needed some work done and he did it and they paid it. So that may be a possibility for you. I don't know how bad your situation is, but the whole part of rebuilding is to get to a place where you have settled, where you have income coming in, where you have a place to stay, and then you start addressing the credit issue. You don't, because you know, trying to address the credit issue before you are stable, before you have a place, because I'm here to tell you, when you are in this state of being unstable and you don't have like the boarding house years were some of the worst years of my life. 
You know, I was living among strangers. I was living in this room. It didn't have heating. It didn't have air conditioning. It was 150 bucks a week. That's all I could do. And it was one of the worst periods of my life. And I don't wish that on any of you. One of the things you're gonna to have to do is practice self-care during this time as well. You're going to have to take a bath. You're gonna to have to brush your teeth. A lot of people get so depressed, they let that go. And this is how you can enter into that perpetual homeless stage where you let personal hygiene go, you, your mental go. So one of the things you need to do is to have an established routine. You need to get up, you need to get dressed, you need to have somewhere to go, you need something to do. Do not let that go because you can descend into a very bad situation if you just let that go and you become one of these people who's just existing. In the West End, I was in the boarding house was in the West End of Atlanta and I just encountered so many people who were just existing. They were not thriving, they weren't living for anything and it, it was just horrible. And one of the things that you've got to understand is I don't care how bad it's gotten, there is hope. I'm here to tell you there is hope. If, this, if you get nothing else out this message, there is hope. There is the possibility and the distinct reality of you not only reclaiming your former life, but doing better. Because when I was in that situation, if you had told me that I would be living the way that I live today, I would have slugged you. I thought you would have been toying with my emotions because I just felt so worthless. I felt so messed up. I felt so not a part of society because I was doing so poorly. And I'm here to tell you there is hope. There is possibilities. There is the silver lining, so to speak. And one of the things you need to do is begin to read books, expand your education, expand your skill sets. Do not wallow in self-pity, which is gonna be hard. Because, I mean, you just went through this thing, all this stuff just fell on you, and now you are hopeless. You don't, it's, it's gonna be hard. Also, if you are a drinker or you do drugs, stop. Let the alcohol, because the whole time I was in that boarding house, I did not have one drink, not one, not even beer. When you're in a bad situation, one of the worst things you want to do is to try to dull the pain with alcohol or drugs, because this can become a full blown addiction and this can make things much worse. So if you're a drinker, you, you like to do a little, you know, experiment with a little bud, stop it you know, get us clean, develop a workout regimen. I used to do push-ups, knee bends, and I used to walk, I used to walk a lot. So this is something else that you need to do. You need to keep yourself active and keep yourself in shape, practice self-care, and also look forward to the future. Look really forward to the future. Because I got some stories I'm not gonna talk about on this channel, because this is personal finance. But you know, you can check them out on Hustlers Kung Fu of all of the situations that I went through. And when you fall out of society, it becomes a battle to get back to being normal. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is there are many people who are about to fall out of society. Once these evictions begin, these poor people are going to be out. They're going to be kicked out. They're not going to have a place to go. And they're going to be in that same situation that I was in many, many years ago. And I'm here to tell you it is personal hell. It, it just doesn't get better unless you make it better. It's not going to get better by itself. I mean, this is going to take a monumental effort for you to begin to rebuild your life, to begin to put yourself back together again for you to go on and become a member of society. Because I'm here to say, right now we have 40 million people who don't have jobs. And X amount of these people are on mortgage forbearance. A lot of these folks are gonna lose their homes. A lot of these people are gonna get kicked out and they're gonna be in the economic badlands. And you know, once again, just watch this video. If this is you, and just think about it because I used to be right where you were. 
And I was able to go from that situation of being homeless, losing my apartment, wrecking my car, being divorced, to becoming a millionaire. It is possible. It is possible. But you're gonna have to work really, really hard. It is just not gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to depend on anything. You're probably gonna have some friends who are gonna abandon you. Your social circle's probably gonna change. There's gonna be so many little things that are going to happen with what you're doing where you're gonna to have to practice a lot of self-care. You know, if you're a church goer, find yourself a good church, lean on the church, and also lean on your friends. You know, the ones that you, because there will be some people who will still be your friend. There will be people who will leave your life because you fell off. It's just, it's the strangest thing. I may tell that story one day, but I want you to work really hard on maintaining your sanity, staying sober, and begin working very hard because I'm here to tell you, you can get out of this. It's gonna take time. Let's be really, really clear. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take hard work, it's gonna take effort, but you can overcome this with hard work, discipline, and a plan. So one of the first things, you know, if you find this video, I want you to go down below, get 30 days to 2,500. I made the decision I'm gonna leave this course free forever. I'm not gonna start charging again for it. And you could go through this course and you could begin building income, building a life, even if you can't find a job. Even if you can't find a job. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how powerful that is. Because Cleaver actually started his computer repair business. He had no job, he had no car, he was living with people. And he was able to, and it, it ends up with a beautiful story because one of his first customers, he met the customer's niece, they fell in love and they got married. And the Cleaver ended up buying that house that he was just staying in. So, you know, it, all things are possible. It's just a matter of you doing the work. So go below, get 30 days to 2,500, get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success and good luck and God bless.